that idea. The time now, half past four, Sarah so Tomb has the news. 95 FM, Aquano Medium Wave, and on digital, BBC Radio Scotland. News and sport for the Borders with Richard Gordon. Good afternoon. Television viewers who receive their digital signal from the main transmitter at Selkirk will have to retune their TV or boxes from today. Other terrestrial services such as UView, BT TV and TalkTalk will also be affected. Angela Suave reports. The change affects those who get their TV on Freeview from the main Selkirk transmitter, around 18,000 homes. The BBC A multiplex, which carries standard definition services, moved this morning to make way for an expansion of mobile digital broadband services. Satellite TV viewers and those served by local relay transmitters won't be affected. If you are, you'll have been seeing a message on screen over the last week. Once you've retuned your TV, you'll continue to receive BBC channels as normal, unless you're one of an unlucky less than 1% of COM estimate will need to replace the rooftop aerial. But the original channel won't be switched off for a few weeks to allow viewers time to retune or make the necessary changes. Advice and information is available online at freeview.co.uk slash borders or there's a free phone helpline on 0808 08 1000 288. A major refurb affordable housing boost for the borders will be discussed by councillors next Tuesday. You could see over 50 new homes created in Edelston. Patricia Hitchcock reports. Our report to Scottish Borders Council's Executive Committee recommends the disposal of the former Earlston High School to allow Eildon Housing Association to redevelop the site. A feasibility study by Eildon identified that the site has the capacity for up to 55 new homes, which could be completed by 2020. There would also be a new play park. The former Earlston High School was identified as a prioritised affordable housing site in the Council's Strategic Housing Investment Plan. £163 million could be invested into affordable housing over five years with the local authority and its partners delivering almost 1,200 homes over that period. Now, Istifan, chief executive of Eildon Housing Association, says addressing housing needs across local communities, including high demand areas like Earlston, is a vital component in ensuring the region thrives. Parts of the former Earlston High School site have already been used for the Leader Valley School for Children with Special Needs. Warrants have been issued for the arrest of three men who failed to turn up at Selkirk Sheriff Court and answer a charge of hair coursing. Ryan Spence from North Yorkshire, Stuart Brandt from Derby and Anthony Webster from Suffolk are accused of deliberately hunting a wild mammal, namely seven hares with four lurcher-type dogs at Todd's Hill Estate near Oxford in January. An Elson man's admitted throwing a wheelie bin at a taxi in the village's high street. Harry Bailey pleaded guilty to culpably and recklessly throwing the bucket, damaging the windscreen last July. Some of the sheriff court heard Bailey had tried to get into the taxi. 28-year-old then approached the vehicle and threw the bin at it. There were five people in the taxi, including the driver. A new windscreen had to be fitted, putting the vehicle off the road and resulting in substantial loss of earnings. Bailey was given a nine-month restriction of liberty order. Keeps him at home between 9 at night and 5.30 a.m. and ordered to pay £200 compensation. The latest of the Council's Community Planning Partnership sessions is on in Hoyt Town Hall today. It's Saturday at 3 and will run until 6.30 p.m. You'll be asked what you like about where you live or dislike indeed and what you'd like to change. If you can't make it along, you can make your views known online through Instagram or Twitter. A Borders charity which helped children who live in the contaminated area caused by the Chernobyl nuclear power station disaster has come to an end after 16 years. Youngsters from Belarus came for a month-long holiday which it's estimated could have increased their expected lifespan by two years. But Chamber Fraser Sim is stepping down, so the Chernobyl Children's Lifeline Borders Link has decided to fold. Mr Sim is thanking local businesses and clubs for their donations and support over the years and paid tribute to the dedication and care of the host families, many of whom, he says, have retained bonds with the children they hosted. An English teacher from Cloven Forts has won the inaugural Scottish Teenage Book Prize. Claire McFall's third novel, Black Cairn Point, came out on top of a vote by 12 to 16-year-olds, which she says is an enormous compliment. The Scottish Book Trust described it as a chilling and atmospheric thriller about an ancient malevolent spirit's reawakening in Dumfries and Galloway. Claire wins £3,000. She's just also signed a film contract in China for her first novel, Ferryman, which sold almost a million copies there. 
Rugby Jet Forest Rugby Club have secured £130,000 towards the development of their clubhouse. The event comprises £50,000 from Scottish Rugby's Club Sustainability Fund and £80,000 from the Sports Scotland National Lottery Fund. Further funding has been sought from Jedra Common Good Fund, amongst other sources. The scheme in total will cost around £300,000 and will see the modernisation of the changing rooms, gym and toilets, and as well as changes to the entrance at Riverside Park. Borders weather now, here's Kirstine MacDonald. Any remaining showers will clear this evening, leaving dry conditions with clear spells developing and a fairly widespread frost. Lows of minus 2 Celsius. Tomorrow will be a bright and breezy day with spells of sunshine. West or northwesterly winds will be brisk, resulting in a few showers being pushed in from the west at times. Temperatures will be up slightly on today's values, although it will feel colder in exposure to the wind. Highs of 8 Celsius. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. News Drive on BBC Radio Scotland. I'm Bill Whiteford. Powers for Scotland after Brexit uh, were discussed at Prime Minister's questions today. The SNP's Angus Robertson uh, wanted Theresa May to come.